Okay, welcome back. We're back for video six. And tonight we're going to be talking about, jumping ahead a little bit forward, talking about wiring in the actual login uh, routine into a Windows Forms application. Got a ton of communications about this. People asking me, you know, can you at least give us a glimpse, just a little hint of where we're going with this. And I uh, thought, you know, tonight had a little bit of free time. I thought I could do that. So what I did was I added, as you can see, there's a new project there on the bottom called statusreport.wf for Windows Forms. You could easily add .mvc, .asp, yada, yada, yada. I think you get the point. Um, <laughs> so what we're going to look at is the login function here. Remember, everything's static. We want this thing to function as much like an API as we can. But but we need to know that since we're doing it like this and we haven't wired in WCF or any service layer in between yet, we're still going to be bound to that entity framework. Uh, that way when we pass the connection string to the entity framework, the BLL class in this case, since we are doing some stuff there, it needs to know what in the world we're talking about. So we'll look at the app.config in our Windows Forms look there. But let's start here at the login function where we take us, remember, clear text username and clear text password. So we need to be thinking about security if we're going to go over a WAN, a wide area network, uh, SSL or something like it. Uh, FF5 Networks has a big IP device. You know, there's all kinds of devices out there that'll do encryption on the fly for you that's hardware-based, and they're really good. Uh, or you can just go GoDaddy, get you a good wildcard certificate, and then you can have all the uh, SSL sites you want under one domain. So make the choice, send me a question, email. We can talk about that subject in great detail. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, first thing we're going to do is we're going to encrypt that password because remember we're encrypting the password in the database. And so we're going to encrypt it. And then we're going to pull from the database people where the username, the email address, which we know is unique because in the save routine we check for the email address and user ID. So we know this email address is unique. We're going to look and see where the email address equals the username and we're going to string.compare using the English culture. US specifically, if the passwords match. And it just so happens because of the way we're encrypting and decrypting, which is also in this person object. Look at video uh, five if you don't know what I'm talking about. We talked about it a little bit, but we encrypt and decrypt down here uh, in two methods. See if I can find them here, if I can just aimless, aimlessly search around. Encrypt and the decrypt, just make sure you check those passwords are the same, set them to whatever you want. You could do it at the class level and be really clever about it, but uh, actually you couldn't. You have to do it here, so just make sure them passwords match, and obviously you're not going to change them or everything's going to be jacked up. Uh, so we're going to log in, and then if we get someone back, we're going to send that object back. Now, it's important to note here that if even if there's an unsuccessful logon, because of this line of code right here, we are sending back a default empty object. So we're going to need to check that ID when it comes back to make sure that we got a real person from the database. So, how in the world do we wire this thing into a real-world consumer and application? Well, I just right-clicked and I went to Add, and I went to New Project. And I added a Windows Forms application. Everyone knows how to do that. And if you don't, uh, check out my basic C Sharp video series. Also on this uh, YouTube channel, Texas Lake House. Uh, we go over that. But we added this Windows Forms. It gave us a skillfully named form1.cs, which is absolutely useless. I renamed it to mainform.cs. And if we take a look at that main form, I've just got a status report main form, change the icon for you, added a uh, bar down here at the bottom, and then I added a couple of things to it with a progress bar, a label, and then this is a neat trick I'm asked about sometimes. How do you get a right alignment down here in a taskbar of a label? And the way you do that is you add a label and you set its spring property to true. And that will automatically fill up that void and then you can just come over here and add a label and it will 
move as it needs to. So it gives the illusion of being right aligned, even though they don't give you the beauty and the ease of right alignment. But it's there. So how do you secure this thing? Well, probably makes the most sense in the load event, right? When the form loads up, show some kind of login form. Let them log in. If they log in, fine. Show who they are down here in the welcome. Say welcome so-and-so. If they don't successfully log in, close the application. That's a pretty easy use case. So we're going to go over that, but I'm going to go over a trick that I use in Windows Forms applications. And I want to say first that I learned this trick from CSLA from Rockford Lotka, L-H-O-T-K-A dot net, his book series, which I read them all. Uh, in his project, he had a uh, way that he was referencing this main form from children and doing some logging and various things like that. And I borrowed it. And I've been using it for years, and it works wonderfully. I'm going to show you how I do that. It's pretty simple, actually. What you do is you declare a public static uh, type of main form of itself and call it instance. And then I've got in my constructor where I set the instance equal to this. So any child form or any object within this project actually can reference main form dot instance dot login main form dot anything that's public. Uh, it wouldn't be able to get login, I guess, because it's not public. But we're going to have some functions in here where we can set that status uh, notify bar to a certain percentage. We can set that status text loading this, saving this, doing this, doing that. Those are all going to be exposed here publicly, and we'll just call them from the children by saying main form dot instance dot do something, right? So that's a pretty neat little trick you can use. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, we're going to come in and on the load event, we're going to say, look, if not login, call in this function here, which is a Boolean login. If not login, exit the application. Pretty standard stuff. Otherwise, it means we successfully logged in, set the welcome text. And setting the welcome text is just setting that text there at the bottom right corner of the uh, designer, this text right here, setting it to welcome identity first name and last name, whoever happened to log in. Now you could get really fancy here and do security levels and all of that kind of stuff, but it's beyond the scope of this application. I don't need it. We, we're going to base everything off your manager's ID. That When we build a tree view or do whatever we're going to do, we're just going to say, look, give me all the people I manage, show them in a list, and let me go through their reports. It's pretty simple. If you don't manage any people, the only reports you can see are your own. So it's a pretty self-contained little security model we're going to use. So what we do is when we log in, we're going to create a result. I love doing this. I know some people get fancy fancy and combine lines of code and all of that, but look, I live by the motto, when you write code, entry-level programmers need to be able to maintain it because that's going to be usually, not always, but usually the people on your service desk. So I busted up here so that an entry-level person could come in and say, yeah, he's declaring a form, he's showing it a dialogue. Um, you know, obviously I should have done this as a uh, parent. And then I'm saying, look, if the person logged in isn't null after we've closed that form and their ID is greater than zero, it means we actually got someone logged in. Because remember, the login function from that person object sends back a new empty object no matter what. So that ID would be equal to zero. Uh, we're going to say it's true and that the identity, and the reason I expose identity public is because several of the, in fact, probably every child form is going to want to know something about the person logged in, right? So I expose an identity object, which is a person DTO, to the world and the world being this particular .wf project. And then I return true. And so let's go through here and let's watch it run. We're going to go debug. We're going to start without debugging. Voila! There's our login form. And I just happen to know a login
and I haven't said on the password text field, I have not set it as a character uh, masking yet because you, the humble audience, and me, your humble host, wouldn't do a whole lot of good if all you saw was dot, dot, dot. You'd have to take my word for everything, and, well, I'm just not really into that. So we're passing 123, which we know is a valid password and a valid user, so we should be able to log in. I hit log in. Entity Framework does this job, and we can see Welcome Mad Max, which is the correct person. You can go into the person table of the database and check my work. So let's do the second part of the use case, the non-happy path. We're going to go in here. We're going to say me too at me.com. And we're going to say one, two, three, four. Obviously, this person is not in the database. Login failed. Well, okay. Notice I don't close the form. It wouldn't be very nice of us if we just let him log in once and said, whoops, you screwed up. I'm going to close the application. We'll let him hit cancel. Now, I have set the uh, cancel button to, if I hit escape, it'll cancel and close the application. If I hit enter, it selects the login. I can show you how I did that in just a second. But I'm going to hit cancel or escape like they gave up if they were trying to hack into it and no, nope, couldn't get in. And the application closes, so the non-happy path, the extension uh, where things don't work, works like we expected. So let's take a quick look at that login form and see how I did that. Just a couple of text boxes, but we've got a couple of buttons here, button, login, and cancel. And the way you hit, let's say I want to hit enter, and I want to fire some event when I hit enter. And it just so happens to be the event this login button's tied to. Click on your form. Go up here to the top, go to Accept Button, and select the button that you want to be your Accept Button. In this case, the Login Button. And the same thing with the Cancel Button, aka Button Cancel. If I hit Escape, that's the one that it fires the event for. In the Login, what we do is we, we don't check to see if they've put anything in the text box or anything yet. Like I said, I want to show you how this was going to start to work. But remember how I said we wanted to try to run this as a API? Well, look. Person.login, send the username and the password. The person writing this Windows Form application doesn't know a darned thing about our database. They don't know about reports. They don't know about any of that stuff. If they're like me, and if you're like me, you merely go to the Entity Framework Project, you print off the EDMX and work from that on your desk. Yeah, you burn a tree, but nah. Plant one in your backyard to make up for it. And so we send that object back. We try it. We catch. If there's an exception, we show them the exception encountered. Here we would love to put something like log for net or some kind of error logging. We may do that, um, but certainly show them the exception. I happen to run a teams of developers, so they're technical. So this is a more than adequate way to do it. Uh, if you're doing uh, BAs or you people with MBA degrees, uh, we would probably want to log that message in the database so that some technical person could decipher it. And then down here we've got a, if their logged in is not null, the object that came back, remember this is a person DTO object. If it's not null and if its ID is less than one, we know that it is not a real person that came back. So we show that login failed. Otherwise, we close the application. And you say, wait a minute, why are we closing it? Well, they successfully logged in. We don't need to keep this form open anymore. I don't, you'll notice up here, there's no X and no minimize or any of that because I took the control, uh, the uh, uh, taskbar up here, and I put it to false, that they couldn't control the control bar, that it was hidden. And so they can't close it, right? So... The only way they can get out of it is click cancel or successfully log in. That way they are stuck to our use case. Okay? Well, hopefully that gives you a little instant gratification. I'm going to go ahead and check these changes in for you, if it will. 
Sometimes the database is locked and it won't check them in. Yep, it checked them in for us. The source code's ready for you to download, tinker with, play with, do whatever you want. Uh, the next video, maybe two days coming, may come tomorrow, but probably two days. Uh, you know what, let's shoot for tomorrow. And what we'll do is we will uh, wire in the event that says, look, I'm a manager, show me the people uh, under me. So we'll create a user control that sh lists people. Uh, we'll do that because we're going to use that somewhere in our application, I'm sure. So we'll show you how to do that next time. But in the meantime, I want to take my time and thank you for stopping by. And uh, we'll see you next time. Good night.